G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about putting. And in particular, I'm gonna talk about putting within GS Pro. How do I do it? So this is gonna be very much a user's way or my personal way to putt in GS Pro, what I think about in depth, really getting into the weeds, the nuts and bolts of it, to hopefully make you a better putter in GS Pro. If you are new to GS Pro, you're gonna look at people when they putt and you're gonna go, man, that is unrealistic. You can't make that many putts. It does take time. It takes time and it's taken me a lot of time to actually learn the ins and outs of putting on GS Pro and I'm still not perfect. There are people that are a lot better than me, but this is gonna be a video of how I personally putt in GS Pro, and hopefully that's gonna make you a better putter as well. Okay, so first off, without even going into putting yet, I'm not gonna open anything yet within GS Pro. Things that I work on in my own game, and this is gonna be indoors, but also outdoors. And I'm gonna give a lot of information away today that, to be honest, I don't really want to because I wanna have the advantage when I'm playing not only in GS Pro, but in real life. But I'm gonna talk about a few things that I work on. So putting for me has always been the weakest part of my game outdoors. I've struggled with putting. There's no, there's no secret. Putting outdoors is something I used to struggle at. I've gotten a lot better now because I've used my indoor setup and I've actually learned a lot about putting since owning this software, but more in particular, since owning my X-Putt. The X-Putt, I bought that thing with the intent to get better at putting outdoors. And I can honestly say, it has helped me just out of this world. It has helped me so much. It has honestly been one of the best purchases I've made for my golf game. So before getting into GS Pro and how to read greens and all that, I'm just gonna talk about what metrics you need to work on in your game that's gonna help you not only in GS Pro, but to become a better putter outdoors. The two things you need to focus on are HLA or horizontal launch angle and speed. A lot of people, including myself, got wrapped up with putter path. And putter path is important, don't get me wrong. Putter path is very important if you wanna see that ball rolling end over end, but horizontal launch angle with putting, which is gonna be your face angle at impact, and speed control are the two biggest things with putting. Now, how do we get those better? How do we work on them? The best drill that I have, that I use, and I don't wanna give this away, but I'm going to, I use this, this ruler. I'll try and make sure I'm getting this in frame. So this ruler I bought, well, I actually got this a long time ago when I lived in the States. The pro there um, who, who was at my home club, he actually gave me this. So he knew back in the day a lot of information that I didn't know. So he gave me this uh, metal stick. And honestly, this thing is how I work on my horizontal launch angle. I've got a little indent in the actual ruler there. I'll make sure you can see that on camera. So there's a little indent on one of the sides of it and a ball will rest in that little indent. And all I do is I put a ball on there and then I putt and I roll the ball down this ruler. Now, the key is this is about an inch wide and the goal of this drill is to get your horizontal launch angle within a degree left and right each time. If you do that, if you get your horizontal launch angle within a degree left and right, for me, that I consider a good putt. You've started it within a degree of your intended start line. And using this ruler gives you instant feedback to whether you've achieved that goal or not. If you can get the ball to roll all the way down this ruler, you have achieved your goal of starting the ball with the correct horizontal launch angle. So that's the first drill I use, and I do that a fair bit just at night in the living room. So goal number one, you want your horizontal launch angle to be as close to zero as possible. If you're not starting the ball on the correct line in the real world or within GS Pro, you're not gonna make the putt, no matter how good of a green reader you are. Now, you can, if you completely misread the putt, and then you completely misread your launch angle, you can make a putt just by random luck, but you wanna make sure you're starting the ball on your intended line. And that's my main drill to actually achieve that goal. Another drill I do, I have a putting mirror and I love putting mirrors. I've always loved putting mirrors. This for me is more about getting my eyes just inside the golf ball or just on the golf ball. So. Setup is key. You wanna have a good setup when you putt. So I use my putting mirror to make sure that my setup is correct, my eyes are over the ball. This is a really good drill as well. 
So those are the main two drills I use or really things that keeps my putting within an optimal or an acceptable range. As long as I get set up correct and I can roll the ball over my intended start line, the only other thing I need to think about is speed. So how do I work on speed? So I have a chart that I use within GS Pro and I'll put a picture of that on screen now. Okay, so this is the chart I use when I'm trying to match my ball speed with the distance within GS Pro. This is available on the Discord. I'll try and link it in the description of this video as well. But this chart is gonna give you your ball speeds to your distance that you need to hit within GS Pro. So the Pro Tour is generally gonna be an 11 or 12 stimp. I'm personally calibrated in my room, in my fields to 12 stimp. So that is the main column I use where it says stimp 12 and it's got the ball speeds on the left and the distance is there on the right. If I then have to use stimps 10, 11, or 13, I just simply look at the distance on say stimp 13, go across to the column where it's stimp 12, and then I'm gonna use that distance as my feel in game. So that's how I get my feel for distance within GS Pro. I'm calibrated on stimp 12, that's what I use. I also use the X putt, and so I work on my feels within that as well. Now, the X putt, interestingly enough, the stimp 12 on X putt is a little bit quicker than the stimp 12 within GS Pro. So when I use the X putt, I always use stimp 11. All right, cool. So that's the drills I guess I do for putting, and that's not only going to help me indoors within GS Pro, but also outside as well. Okay, let's head over to the practice green now. I'll head over to on-course practice and we'll go to the GS Pro practice facility and we'll talk through some of the putts. Okay, I have kicked you guys over to this view now so you can actually see my screen and see what I'm seeing. Okay, so within GS Pro, talking about speed control now, you're gonna have different gates or speeds with which a putt will go in the hole. Now, Ralph, one of the guys who does GS Pro videos, he's got a really in-depth video talking about those gates and different speeds that the putt will actually fall on the hole based on the speed that you hit it. Basically what that's saying is if you hit a five footer hard, at some point it's gonna hit the back of the hole and miss, it's gonna jump over the hole. If you hit a putt too short, it's obviously not gonna get to the hole, it's not gonna go in. So there's definitely a window there of maximum and minimum speeds that it, the ball is actually gonna fall into the hole. If you wanna get into all of that, definitely check out Ralph's video. He talks about that in depth. I'm just gonna talk about this from a user's perspective. So this putt, for instance, here is five feet. It's a simple putt. All I have to do is get the distance control correct. This putt has nothing to do with break. I don't have to aim it. So all I've got to do now is get my horizontal launch angle within probably half a degree and get the speed correct and this putt will go in the hole. So when I'm putting indoors, I still line up my ball. I try and putt the same indoors as I do when I'm outdoors. So when I'm outdoors, I will line up my ball. So I do the exact same thing indoors. Now, it obviously helps having uh, a launch monitor like the iMini that has a really good putting mode because you're gonna get more realistic horizontal launch angles. When you use something like a GC2 or a Mevo Plus, on short putts, those horizontal launch angles can be exaggerated or just complete misreads. GS Pro does add a massaging algorithm to the horizontal launch angle. This happens within 20 feet of the hole. So if your unit, for instance, says two degrees right within 20 feet of the hole, the horizontal launch angle reported in GS Pro will be significantly less. Outside of 20 feet, this algorithm doesn't happen. So what I'll do now is I'll put up a picture of my actual putting strip or my hitting strip. And what you'll notice is I've got the actual area where I hit the ball there. And then off to the right hand side, I try and keep an area perfect. So there's no impact. There's no little divot. There's no dent. On the right hand side of my hitting strip, I solely keep for putting. I don't want any imperfections in that area. I've lined my ball up. I've got a five foot putt. So looking at my putting chart for a stimp 12 green from five feet, I need to get this rolling about three miles an hour or just under three miles an hour and this putt will go in the hole. So all I do for me is I don't really think about the actual miles an hour. I just simply think about a five foot putt and I've calibrated myself to think of a five foot putt. So I know what a five foot putt feels like just because I've practiced it a lot and all I'm trying to do is hit this putt five feet. Okay, so that was a good putt. What you'll notice is the speed there says 3.2 miles an hour, and it was a good putt. 
Now, fun fact, I didn't have the putting mode turned on on the iMini, and the horizontal launch angle I saw was 0.8 left. And if we look at GS Pro, it says 0.1 left. So that's that algorithm, that massaging algorithm coming into effect. All right, so that's the straight putts taken care of. It's just gonna be a, a case of just getting out to the GS Pro practice facility and hitting some putts. That's all it is. It's just practice and it's getting a feel for the speed. Let's now go out on course. I'm gonna show you a few famous holes, a few famous putts, and we're gonna talk about uphill and downhill putts and how much the break will affect the speed or how much the speed will affect the break. Okay, so we're out here at Georgia Golf Club on the 16th hole. We've hit our shot onto the green, pretty famous hole. Everything feeds back down that hill. However, we've left ourselves with a, call it a 27 foot putt. It is six inches downhill. So how do I do the calculation? How hard do I have to hit this putt? So what I do, is if I've got a 26 or call it 27 foot putt, however many inches it is uphill or downhill, I just convert that to feet and then take it off the distance. So this one's 27 foot overall, it's six inches downhill. So I'm gonna hit this as if it's a 21 foot putt. That's how I do it for all my putts. And to be honest, it served me pretty well. So I've got a 21 foot feel, I call it, on this putt. It is severely breaking left to right and it's downhill. So what's significant about that downhill bit is that the putt is gonna break a lot more than you think because the ball's gonna be traveling at a slower speed. So the actual break is gonna affect it a bit more. So for this putt, if it was a flat putt, I'd be aiming potentially say around there, but because this is downhill, I'm gonna aim a lot further left. So I'm gonna be aiming up here somewhere. Now, there's obviously a window to where this putt is gonna fall in the hole. If you take a more direct route, you can hit the putt a lot harder and the ball's gonna stay on line and you're potentially gonna make it. However, if you hit the putt too hard and it hits the hole, it's gonna bounce over or lip out. If you go too high, you're really gonna to have to die the ball in the hole and speed becomes a really, really big factor. You're gonna to have to get your speed absolutely perfect. You're not gonna be able to hit it too hard or too soft. In the middle somewhere there, is a good window. We've got a good opportunity now with matching our speed with that line that we've chosen. So we know this putt's gonna break big time left to right. It's downhill, so it's gonna break more than we think. So if we aim somewhere around there, let's hit that putt and let's try hit a 21 foot feel. So it's stimp 12, 21 feet is gonna be 5.8 miles an hour. So 5.8 miles an hour is my goal ball speed for this putt. I'm not gonna be thinking about that 5.8 miles an hour though. All I'm thinking now in my head is 21 feet. So I'm gonna get that feel of 21 feet. When I'm happy with that feel, that's all I'm thinking about. I'm not thinking about the break or anything. I'm just thinking about getting this ball started on the line that I've intended to which is gonna be parallel to my unit. So I wanna see my horizontal launch angle be within that degree, like I said, degree, within a degree left or right is a good effort. So that's my goal now, horizontal launch angle and speed. So 21 feet as a feel, I have lined up my putt. Okay. Now we had 5.9 as a ball speed, so pretty good. And our horizontal launch angle, we had 0.3 of a degree left on the unit. We had 0.1 of a degree left on GS Pro. So pretty much for that part, we did everything that we wanted to do. It did miss, but it was a very, very good part. It only just missed to the right of the hole. It died at the last second. But the actual line that we picked, the speed that we picked, and the horizontal launch angle was all good, and it actually had a very good chance of going in the hole. Okay, I've now come back to the 15th hole. It's lucky it's not busy on course today because I was able to jump around between the two holes. But what we've got now is a 20 foot putt. It's uphill seven inches. So already I'm thinking 27 foot as a feel, if not a little bit more. It's going right to left. And because we're putting this uphill now, I'm gonna be hitting it a bit harder. So the, it's not gonna break as much as I think. So for this putt, I'm gonna be aiming say about there. And again, you're gonna have that window or that gate to how far outside you can start the ball based on the speed that you're gonna hit this putt. If I'm gonna hit it harder, I can play a lot less break. If I'm gonna hit it softer, I have to play more break, just like in real life. So that looks good there initially for me at the speed that I'm gonna try and play this putt. And now all I've gotta do is hit a, say call it 28 foot putt as a feel. 
if I look at my chart, I go down to 28 and it says it's just under seven miles an hour as a ball speed. Again, I don't use that as much because I know what a 27 putt or 28 foot putt should feel like. So let's just do that. Okay, so all I'm thinking now is 28 foot putt as a feel, get my horizontal launch angle good, and this should go in. Just missed to the left. It was a really good putt, but it just missed to the left. So because I'm outside 20 feet, what you'll see is 0.9 of a degree to the right was the horizontal launch angle, and that's what my unit says. And that's because outside 20 feet, GS Pro doesn't add that massaging algorithm. So that part there, we hit a good part. It was still within a degree right of where I was intending to start the ball. If I'd have hit that a little bit harder, the ball would have actually held its line. It would have gone in the hole. Or I can aim slightly more right than I just did. So let's aim slightly more right and we'll see if we can make this putt. Okay, so now I know my line's correct. That's the line that I need to start the ball on. So hopefully now all I can do is match that speed that I just hit and this putt should drop in the hole as long as my horizontal launch angle is good. Okay, so that one there, what happened? I actually hit the ball a little softer and so the ball didn't get to the hole. So I'll do one more putt. Okay, and there we go. So that was a seven mile an hour ball speed or 7.1 miles an hour. It had roughly the correct line and the ball went in the hole. Now let's talk about double breaking putts and the method I use to basically determine where to start the ball. So looking at this putt, initially what I'll do is I'll actually count how many grid lines are moving left to right versus right to left. So in this instance, we have one, two, three, four that are moving left to right. And then we've got one that's kind of neutral. And then we've got one, two, three, maybe four that are moving right to left. The next thing I'll do is I'll actually look at the beads that are on those grid lines. And I can see that these ones initially are moving a bit quicker than the ones next to the hole. So that's going to tell me that when I hit this putt, it's going to kick to the right quite hard initially. The other things I want to think about, and it's not really going to affect me on this putt as much because the break isn't severe, but when you hit the putt, it's going to be traveling a lot quicker. So the initial break of the putt isn't going to affect it as much as the break at the end of the putt when the ball's traveling a little bit slower. So generally on double breakers, if a putt is severely breaking at the hole, you need to really account for that and you need to add a bit more buffer on how much the ball is going to break when it starts to slow down. Looking at this putt though, it's going to move a bit more left to right than it is right to left. So for this putt, what I would do is I would pretend that all of these dots moving right to left aren't there. I would select the line that I think the ball would need to start on if those dots weren't there. And then now I take into account the dots moving right to left. So I'll take a little bit of break off the putt for this one, for instance. Now, all it is, is a ball speed game. So now all I'm thinking about is distance. I've got my line, I'm not thinking about that anymore. All I need to do is get my horizontal launch angle within that degree. So now I'm thinking 26 feet, it's uphill seven inches. So I'm just gonna do the math and add those together. It's gonna be about 33 feet. So because this is uphill, I'm gonna go just over, I'm gonna go 34 feet as a feel. So looking at my chart, 34 feet is roughly 7.9 miles an hour. So that's the ball speed I need to hit to get this putt to go into the hole. But I'm not thinking about that. All I'm thinking about is the distance. Might be a bit short. It was. So it was short in the jaws. And if we look at the ball speed, that definitely ties in. Horizontal launch angle was good. The line of the putt was good. The only thing I got wrong in the formula there was the speed. And that's where practice is gonna come into play. You need to definitely practice ball speed and horizontal launch angle. Those are the two things you really need to focus on. Okay, let's hit that putt again. Let's see if I can get the ball speed correct this time. So 34 feet as a feel. We had the line, the line was good. Okay, definitely hit that harder. And we've made the putt. 
perfect. So looking at the ball speed, 7.7 .7 miles an hour, that was very close to what we intended to do. And so yeah, that's how I personally putt on GS Pro. You will get better with practice. You will get better with your green reads. You've just got to keep hitting putts, keep playing, get involved on Discord, get involved with the SGT. It is a lot of fun. Hope that helps your putting. Hope you enjoyed that video. If it did, let me know. Any comments or questions, let me know down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.